once upon a time, there was a girl named Pixie, who through the magic of Instagram met her prince, unimpressed Jeffy, and they fell in love. And they got themselves Poppy, a big red old jalopy. Pixie's lots of fun, and Jeffy's not that dumb. If you like build shows, come along and see how it goes. Come and join the venture of Always Van Adventure. Hi folks, hope you're uh, enjoying the lockdown hairdo. <laughs> So I did a video a little while ago about the various different types of inverters and if you'd like to watch that video you can by clicking here. Soon after I produced a video as a form of correction to that first video. Not because the video was incorrect but because my conclusion was unhelpful to the community. I managed to conclude that the most expensive inverter you could buy was also the best one which didn't help anyone out because Everyone had already got inverters, or a huge number of people had already got inverters, and they liked the facilities, but weren't prepared to go out and just buy a new inverter, which is perfectly reasonable. So the correction video that I published was to do with one particular element that people seem to like, and that was the automatic switching from inverter to shore power when you had a main shore power connection available, either in the form of a generator, or in terms of a mains hookup at a campsite. Simply roll up, connect in the cable, and then all of a sudden all your sockets and all your devices are now using the shore power as opposed to using up your battery power. And in the event that somebody accidentally knocked the cable out whilst you were away from your camper van or caravan, the inverter would kick back in again until such time as you realized and re-established the shore power connection. So in my instance, I didn't return back to Poppy and find my beer fridge had warmed up. So I found the NDS priority switch on Road Pro's website, purchased one and thought, that's it, job done. I'll use that as an example of a product that people can purchase and get behind to add to their inverter and their current setup. And then everyone can have automatic switching capability readily available. Now there'll be people watching this who are using a bro broken coat hanger and gaffer tape to lash their batteries together and go, that works fine for me and all the rest of it. I get that. And it's all very well and good me saying, well, just simply spend more money and you get a better result. But where I differ from a lot of people is that they'll lash together some electrical system very inexpensively and then use very expensive products on the end of it. I know one particular person who spent about a pound on their electrical system and runs several thousand pounds worth of Apple products on the end of it. And that's fine. It all seems to have worked so far. But if I'm going to set an example of how it can be done, I need to make sure that it's incredibly safe. I'd hate for anybody to follow along from what it is I'm doing, walk them down a path which I know ain't that clever. So for that reason, I've not linked the NDS video here because I've decided I'm not going to stick with it. It doesn't hold up in testing once scrutinised. And partly my fault as well because at the end of the day, my electrical design is a little more unusual. In the respect that I've taken the decision to go mainly mains powered on board with my devices. Instead of buying a 12 volt TV and a 12 volt fridge, if you bought a 12 volt fridge, you'd have winced once you paid for it. And it works incredibly well because it's natively 12 volts, which means you will, you will have efficiency. I've decided to go a different route and buy less expensive products like fridges, TVs, etc. And kind of put the money that I would have spent on them into the inverter, kind of like the, the, the other electrical side of things that we're saying, running more entry level devices from a more comprehensive electrical system. And the same here, running more modest fridges and TVs and whatnot from a more expensive inverter. So I suppose we've all ended up spending similar money. It's just that I'm putting the money in a different place. Now, this is a bit of an experiment, this whole running mains powered fridges and whatnot. The conventional method, I will admit, is to use 12 volt devices natively. That makes perfect sense. But the maths also stack up 
for doing it my way. And then you'd have far more choice of fridges, far more choice of TVs, etc, etc, etc. So I'm going to use Poppy as a bit of an experiment and I hope it works out. I might end up issuing a correction video to this one in 12 months time. Who knows, saying I was a massive idiot. Go and buy a compressor fridge. They're easily much better. But I won't know until I try. So I'm going to try. And I hope this benefits the community. But if it doesn't and I fall flat on my face, you'll know about it from me first. Now going for this slightly more unusual design means I'll have less 12 volt fuse boards but my mains distribution board <laughs> has grown somewhat in the process i'm not going to go into details about this bad boy today uh, that's a video for another day this deserves a video of its own right courtesy of spunky thank you very much indeed um but this is one of the reasons why I am ending up returning the NDS. Incidentally, I wrote to Road Pro and said, I bought this NDS transfer switch. I'm not sure I completely like it from a testing point of view and also my fault. It's not quite what I hoped it would be. And they said, no problem, return it. We'll give you a refund. Brilliant. I'm actually going to go for a credit now because no doubt there'll be other stuff that I want to buy and RoPro have been absolutely brilliant so it'll be lovely to make their till ring again and I'll select a product that I won't return this time <laughs> and the next time my name pops up on their till I want it to be something that I'm going to keep not email them to want to return but anyway RoPro have been as good as gold so thank you very much but where the NDS has fallen down a little bit is that if I'm making a recommendation for a product, it needs to be safe. And wh whilst this is a, a lovely metal box that this comes in, these terminals need for some form of protection. You can't just bolt that to the inside of your electrical cupboard and get away with it. There's mains voltage at these terminals and they're just not protected enough. Another reason that it didn't stand up to in testing, well, it's there's a bit of confusion over the labelling. See, it says 3,000 watts switching on the website, and it says 3,000 watts on the box. But then there's a safety sticker on the back that says 2,300 watts is the maximum switching load. Um, and um, I haven't got a problem with that, except that 2,300 watts for my use case isn't enough switching power that's about 10 amps and there will be occasions where I can connect to either a 13 or even a 16 amp connection and on those occasions it would be nice to be able to utilize the 16 amps that's available if it's there and that 2300 watts equates to about 10 amps and the other thing is that it doesn't seem to work particularly well with uh, RCDs. To be 18th edition compliant and for safety's sake full stop, the main Shaw hookup power connection on the side of Poppy needs to go via an RCD before it hits any devices. I can't go Shaw power connection into this and then onward to a fuse box. There has to be an RCD in line between the main power input of this and the shore power connection of Poppy. And that can't be in the cable, incidentally, either, because I was going to use an inline RCD like you get for a hot tub or whatever previously. And the van doesn't stand up to scrutiny in that respect because if I simply didn't use that cable, if I was to leave it at home or lose it or it got damaged, and I use somebody else's cable, then I'm hooked up and there's no RCD in place. So that RCD for safety has got to go between the main shore power hookup and this device. And when an RCD is in place, this can behave a little bit temperamental. So the device itself is an A-OK, -okay, but more so the problem in this instance is that I've gone for a completely custom solution when it comes to the fuse box. I'm quite sure that Spunky will never do another fuse box quite like that one. That is very specifically for me. It's personalized. Okay, it's using off the shelf parts, 
but the arrangement and the configuration is specifically for me. It's not really fair to expect any manufacturer to build an off the peg product that would work in such unusual circumstances. So irrespective of those other things that I've mentioned, this thing here just doesn't stack up really because of the other selections that I've made for other products. I'm very bespoke at one end and then I'm expecting an off the shelf product to fit into that system and just work. And that's not really fair on NDS at all. So I hope you don't think I've been bashing NDS there because I, I haven't really, I've acknowledged that part of the problem is the selections that I've made. So with that said, I'm in a situation where I've made a selection on the shore hookup device that I'm going to use, a nice stainless steel one. I think it's for the marine industry, but just something that's a bit more robust than some of the plasticky ones that I've seen. I've got my products that I've decided on. I've got batteries, slightly on and ahhing on the inverter at the moment, but that doesn't matter. That's a video for a later date. And I've got my wonderful, wonderful fuse box. And then the automatic transfer switch bit is missing. Well, they say, they do, necessity is the mother of invention. So I posed this issue to Spunky and said, look fella, here's the position that I'm in. I've pressed the go button on this wonderful fuse box, but I ain't got nothing in the middle that does the clever switching part that I wanted. And he said, well, that's quite all right. I've got this in development. <laughs> How cool is this? Right? So, this is the MBC ATS automatic transfer switch. It's a glanded IP rated box with this flip cover door. I've not got it screwed together, which is why I'm two handed it, but ordinarily that would be fastened together. And then you've got this little door on the front. So, in a roundabout kind of way, this does what I hoped this would, only about 3,000 times better. Okay, now that was, that was hyperbole. Let's be realistic about this. Let's use facts, okay, to support the argument as to why this is such a good bit of kit. Again, using off-the-shelf parts, you know, Spunky hasn't 3D printed this enclosure or anything like that, but he has made a correct selection of the correct devices, wired them together, and then tested them thoroughly. And that is good enough for me. Okay, so I've got this IP rated box. Chances are, wherever it is that I'm gonna have my electrical system, there's going to be pipes. Poppy's a big old bus, but still, she's too small to completely separate the electrical and water. There's gonna be pipes running somewhere. And if I should spring a leak, I don't have to panic too much because this box will easily take a splash of water. There's a lovely big rubber seal around the door. The door isn't just one of those flippy ones. It actually latches closed. You have to depress both buttons before the door will open. And then everything's on glands. All the cable entries and exits are on glands. So that's the first thing. It's lightweight, you know, it's a sturdy box. I'm sure it'll, I don't suggest you kick it around your garden, but I'm sure it's just not gonna fall apart either. And then in terms of internal gubbins, this will act as a 16 amp switch. No problem whatsoever. So I can take something like a 4,000 watt inverter and a 16 amp mains hookup connection, and this will just sort the two out and rapidly as well. If I'm on a shore power connection and my inverter is switched on, but idle because I'm using the shore power, shore power's going in here and then being passed to my sockets. And then somebody was, there was either a power cut or somebody removed the cable. This would switch over to the inverter in what we're gonna call near instantaneous. It is rapid, okay? And then likewise, the switching in the opposite direction also operates really very quickly. So again, near instantaneous, you apply shore power and this just clicks over. So shore power is now being applied to the sockets, no messing around and there's no crosstalk either. This doesn't need 
an external RCD plugged into it. I can go directly from the shore power connection that I've decided upon via the correct cabling straight into this box and this is both the transfer switch and the RCD. So a lot of people will be out there who have an inverter, they have a fuse box, they don't need a few new fuse box, they have a fuse box that has things like double pole RCDs and MCBs and they don't have an automatic transfer switch. And by simply adding this device, you would have that automatic transfer switch facility. Reliably, it's speedy, still represents got good value, and above all, it's safe. There's no cross torque to the male connector of the hookup on the van. In English, what that means is, if I'm on inverter power, and I happen to be stood in a paddling pool full of water and I touch the terminals on the outside of the van, the ones that you plug the shore power into, that's a male connection which means there's exposed pins, and I touch those, there is absolutely no chance whatsoever that I'm going to get a belt off it. Um, I'm not even going to get as much as a tickle. I'm completely safe. And that gives me a huge amount of reassurance in terms of recommending it. So there we are. So I've waffled on quite enough there. There's a link in the description for pricing and how you can get hold of Spunky. If you also decide that that makes a lot of sense, I should be having one of those myself. Now, don't get me wrong, I like Spunky, he's a lovely guy. But if I genuinely didn't think that this pass muster, I wouldn't be recommending it because as I've said, I would hate to be in a position where I'd knowingly or unknowingly, either circumstances, I'd be mortified to find out that somebody got hurt as a result of buying a product that I'd recommended. And that's why I've got to do some retraction on this device. And instead of saying, just don't buy that thing, contact Spunky about one of these instead. It's simply unique. I can't find anything else in the marketplace that does what this does to the degree that it does it. And so I have no bones at all about wholeheartedly recommending it. So there we are. The MBC ATS. Thank you very much. Cheers now. Bye bye.